Hey there, my name is Jody Melwood, and I'm super excited to be with you today to talk about one of my favorite things, and that is Facebook ads. And we're going to be looking at a strategy that's going to help you dominate the news feed and be seen by your ideal clients, not just once, not just twice, but over and over again to really establish your authority in the niche. And that's what I love about Facebook ads is how it gives anyone and any business owner the opportunity to really present themselves and showcase themselves with their authority and expertise and be seen as one of the big players in the game, even with a tiny, tiny ad budget. And that's what we're going to look at with the client attraction code. So a bit about me to start off. My name, Jodie Millwood, and I used to be a private investigator. And how I got into all of that, well, it's a similar story to a lot of people um, in that I cross paths with every day. We have kids and then it's like, what can I do that's going to help me to be at home with the kids? So before the kids, I was a government employee. I just worked for Queensland Health and I was a receptionist. Kids came along and it was like, oh, what am I going to do that's going to work around my family now? So I looked at some opportunities and I thought I'll be a teacher's aide um, because I'll be able to get school holidays and weekends and that would just fit the family perfectly. However, um, I was in the playground surrounded by 50, that's five, zero, screaming five-year-olds while I was doing my vocational, my work placement. And I realized that this was not the gig for me. So I ended up looking um, at some small business magazines and I found an opportunity there. And a friend of mine said, oh, that's very entrepreneurial of you. And that was the first time I'd actually heard that word like entrepreneurial. I'm just like, what, what does that even mean? So I refer to myself as an accidental entrepreneur. I just fell into it out of necessity. Uh, and so that led me to become a private investigator. Obvious career choice, right? No spouse busting. It was like a Robin Hood kind of situation where I was uh, taking money from the government and giving it back to people who actually owned the money, not the government. And of course, the government didn't like that too much, did they? So there was a bit of red tape going on. It was time for a change. And well, of course, natural progr career progression then would be to be a Facebook ad strategist, right? <laughs> So I just fell in love with Facebook. Like I said, I could see the opportunities that it gives anybody, any business owner, or for someone like myself who became a service provider running Facebook ads for people, it's, it's a golden opportunity. So I just loved it. And so I dove into Facebook ads, got some clients on board, and um, you know, one of my clients, I scaled them up to a million dollars in their first nine months of business. So very happy with that. But that came at a price, right? We worked hard. We had launches. And because of the time zones, they were in Canada. I'm in Australia. Um, there was some 24-hour shifts involved, especially at launch time when we're managing six-figure budgets. So I burnt out, hit rock bottom. And I got to a point where I had to decide, am I going to um, continue with this? Or am I going to go off and get a, um, a, um, a job at a factory that pays $20 an hour? And I just felt dead on the inside when I really thought about that. And I was like, nope, keep going. So I dusted myself off and went on, built a multi six-figure agency and have since now have two million dollar businesses and while I still run ads for coaching uh, for coaches consultants and digital course creators I also now train and equip other ad managers and agencies who have um, clients in that niche helping them to support their clients with those types of funnels. Now, how the Facebook ad game has changed. If you've been running ads over the years, in 2021, we've seen massive differences. Thank you very much, Apple. They have changed the game of digital marketing. And with that, it's affected Facebook and how it receives and processes all those great conversion events, okay? Like with the Facebook pixel, people go off, they opt in for our um, free lead magnet or purchase something on our site. But now not all of that data is coming through because apps now need to request permission through Apple's app tracking transparency framework to track conversion events occurring during 
occurring on, sorry, iOS 14 devices. And that's what it looks like. So if you have an Apple phone and you've upgraded to iOS 14 or beyond, you would likely have seen this um, ATT, App Tracking Transparency Tool, okay, where people are saying yes to allow tracking or ask app not to track. So when people say ask app not to track, then that's um, great data that Facebook has been able to get in the past that is not coming back. And it's affecting things. It's affecting our conversions. It's help affecting the way that Facebook goes out and finds people to do more of those conversion events and our lookalike audiences. They're audiences that we create from, you know, people who have opted in for our lead magnet. We'll create a lookalike of people who have opted in for our lead magnet and we create our own custom audience with that. Well, they're greatly affected now with all the data that's been missing. Facebook's working hard to catch up and resolve this, but it has greatly changed the game. And what does this mean for your ads? Well, Facebook will not be capturing as much data. So this will affect the algorithm. Custom audiences and lookalike audiences, as I just mentioned, will be affected. Purchase data is affected. So when optimizing for your purchases or any other conversion event for that matter, and ad placements, we've got that audience network where we can say Facebook, put this on the audience network. So it's not just on Facebook, it will go maybe over onto CNN, for example, or it could end up on a site that's not relevant for your audience because Facebook's not exactly sure where your audience may be. And there is more setup required. Now we need to have a business manager. We can't just be running ads from a personal account. We need to set up business manager. We need to set up our domain verification, aggregated events, and CAPI, which is conversions API. Now that one's not 100% needed, but it's something that we're likely all going to have to have down the track. Now, with this as well, we've seen increases in costs with our ads as Facebook works to find our targeted audiences with less data points. And this is seeing more businesses focus to organic because their ads have gotten just too expensive. Now, one quick tip here is if your ads are getting too expensive, there's only so much we can do with that when Facebook is you know, a competitive platform and you know, with costs increasing. Increase your average order value. Quick tip. So, you know, if you've got something that's for sale, look at adding in upsells and bumps so that you can increase that average order at value to overcome rising costs. Okay. So, as I was saying, with this, more and more businesses are, have jumped back to focus on some organic strategies. Okay. Because it's, you know, the ads have gotten a bit too expensive. Now, what you can do then is amplify those organic efforts because even if it is organic, right, we know that um, we don't get much reach from organic efforts at all, okay? Yes, you can get your engagement and you can get reach, but still it's limited. But you can amplify this for just $5 a day and build an audience on Facebook that does not lose tracking with a no fuss, no stress ad strategy. And this is an invisible ad funnel. It's a system which I call the client attraction code. But what happens is people come into your funnel, right? And that's what we have in marketing. We have a top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel. And it looks just like a funnel that you would see in a kitchen, right? It's nice and wide at the top. It gets narrower. And then down the bottom of that bottom of funnel, it's very narrow. OK, so we bring people into this invisible funnel. They don't even know that they're in it. They haven't had to click and go off over onto a website. So this strategy helps to avoid the need for um, landing pages and setting up the pixels and then losing the tracking with Facebook ads um, with the iOS changes, as I mentioned. So our invisible ad funnel, as you can see here, we have a couple of different campaign options. We've got engagement campaigns. And we've got video view campaigns. There's, if you're not familiar with Facebook ads, we have our campaigns, which we select based on the objectives of our ads. So these ones are designed to bring people into our funnel 
warm them up and continue to nurture them by continuing to be in the news feed every day. So we, cr we create our ads engagement campaign and a video view campaign, and then you've got your ad sets, okay? So here, for example, I'm saying ad set one and ad set two. You may be targeting Tony Robbins in ad set one, Marie Folio in ad set two, okay? You can target those same audiences in your video view campaign because Facebook's going to send that off to a different section of the audience. It's going to send those ads to people who are more likely to watch a video. Our engagement campaigns, Facebook's going to send those ads to people who are more likely to engage. That's comment, like, or share your ads. So two different sections, even though you're targeting the same audiences. So with just a dollar a day with those ad sets, you get a big bang for your buck, okay? A dollar goes really far with these audiences because it might cost you, if you were doing a conversion campaign, sending people over off to your website to click um, and opt in for something, your CPMs, which is a cost per mille, which is to, uh, the cost to reach 1,000 people, might be $30 or $40 even, depending on your niche. Targeting these audiences with these engagement campaigns, that cost per mille may not be $30 or $40. In fact, it won't be. It's more likely to be maybe five, six, maybe $8 or so, okay? So a lot cheaper. So you're going to reach more people. So that dollar a day is going to go far for you. Then what we want to do, we, we create those audiences. We don't want to just like leave them high and dry. That would be like a TV commercial, right? You put money into a TV commercial, you, um, it goes out, and then good luck, they may, may or may not ever see another commercial of you again. But what we want to do is to create our own custom audiences of the people who have watched these videos or engaged with our page and get back in front of them over the next 90 days. So as you can see here, we've got reach campaigns in the middle, which is a fantastic campaign objective with Facebook. And I really love these because they give you the ability to create ads that show every couple of days, right? So your ads may show once every three days or once every five days. So that's great. Your clients won't get banner blindness or your leads in your funnel won't get banner blindness because we're going to put in a few different ad variations. It's just going to beautifully pop up in front of them in their newsfeed every so often. And as you can see, reach campaigns. And for your example here, we've got four different ad sets, all that would have one ad per ad set that's going to be, like I said, popping up in their newsfeed. So when it comes to our audience building campaigns, what sort of content do we put in those? Well, Great question. So content that's great to put here could be educational, informative, um, or entertaining, okay? Now, I you, putting a video in here is what's necessary, one, because you're going to be running a video view campaign, so it needs to be a video. And I find that that video performs just as well, if not better, in the engagement campaigns, okay? So it's the exact same post that you're running for or exact same ad that you're running in your video view campaign as well as the engagement campaign and when it comes to a video people's biggest question is how long should my video be now you'll hear different numbers from facebook you'll hear them say 15 seconds 30 seconds whatever 15 seconds really isn't you know much time to build like a high intent kind of audience um, if that is the sole length of your video because you know you're not going to get that far into it so whenever people ask me how long should it be one thing is that yes initially here at the top of funnel I do say yes let's keep it short you know sort of maybe three minutes or so um, but it depends on the quality, right? There's no point having a three-minute video if the quality isn't any good. So if you can give a really strong, impactful video that's just one minute or maybe even 30 seconds, then do that. And again, the beauty with your Facebook ads is we can change out the content so easily, so quickly. You know, you can do a couple, record a couple of video variations, a 30-second one, a one-minute, a one, three-minute one, 
launch out with one of those first of all get the data in how many people are watching it what's the um, cost per through play that's for someone who's watched it 15 seconds or more and then load in the next video and see how that performs get the data okay and that's the beautiful thing again about facebook you'll be able to see the data on these when you're keeping them on the platform so we have a video here at our top of funnel, okay? And from there, we're creating a video view audience of people who have watched the through play, 15 seconds or more, and then the engagement campaign. So people who have engaged with our page. And once we've done that, we're going to retarget them, okay? So we pop them into some uh, these audiences, into these reach campaigns. And we create a 90-day audience. So it's going to stay front and center of mind and just be popping through over 90 days. So we've got four ad sets here and we'd be running $1 a day ads for each of these ad sets. If you do have a bigger budget or maybe even a bigger audience that you need to get out in front of, then you can simply add additional ad sets here. Okay, so instead of just having four that you would be retargeting these warm audiences, you might have five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's completely up to you. So here we have 90 day audiences and the frequencies are like one in 10. And again, if you've got more or less ad sets, you can change that frequency. So we've got different content pieces here and you might think, wow, that doesn't look like an ad. Well, guess what? That's the kind of thing that's working really well on Facebook because it's a social platform, right? Content pieces that blend in, that look native in the newsfeed, that looks like it could be something a friend of theirs has posted, uh, they tend to do really well. This is where, again, with Facebook, you can test things. So if you do have some images that have been designed by a graphic designer, for example, Sure, put them in and test them, but then also try some selfies, upload some selfies of yourself and some behind the scenes things so that um, that blends in the newsfeed. And again, look and see what the data tells you. So here we've got a few different things. We've got one that is um, like an interview with one of my elite ad manager students. Okay, so she's telling her story in here. That's great social proof. We've got another one that's Josie there, and we're talking about the results that she's gotten for clients, okay? Uh, so that's another content piece. So that, that one has a call to action in it. These ones typically aren't um, here, come over and buy my stuff. Yes, we, you can have one in there for sure, but the purpose of these other, cam, these other ads is to be showcasing our expertise to our ideal client Show them what our values are so that they know that, oh, this is a good fit for me. I'm in alignment with this person. Continue to educate them, entertain them, show them behind the scenes, show them some case studies, show them some testimonials, right? Some examples of work that your other students have had and what they've achieved from working with you. Okay, so lots of valuable content pieces. These are nurturing campaigns, right? So they're not just all who come over and buy, buy, buy. We're furthering the relationship with them to build that know, like, and trust factor. But as you can see with these, we do have that one where it does have join the community of elite ad managers here, but it's certainly not like a big hard push. And there I've also got a video from when I was on holidays in Cradle Mountain, just I had some inspiration, just recorded it and uploaded that, taking consistent action. And then also a bit more of a motivational one there as well about, you know, there's never going to be such a thing as the perfect time. So another thing you can do here is your emails. If you've got like an automation that people, once they've opt in, opted in for something, you've got emails that send out, put your emails in here because only 30% of people continue on to read their emails. If you get 30%, that's very good open rate. So pop your emails in here and um, see how they perform as well. Now, with all the changes that's going on with iOS 14, um, Facebook having to work harder to find our ideal audience, what this means for your ads is that you need to be especially clear with your message and ad copy so that you attract your ideal clients. 
and avoid using obscure technical jargon. So here's an example for you. Our sales enablement system creates an integrated computing framework for profitable customer interactions. That's just such, <laughs> such a jargonistic uh, sentence there. So remember to use plain and simple words that we speak um, to what your ideal client wants. So enable, instead of saying this enablement system has integrated computing framework, blah, 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 for profitable com customer interactions, we help your sales team close deals more quickly much more concise, says exactly what it does. So often we are stuck in our own head, we put in all these flowery words. Cut it back and have a brilliant marketing message that is just clear and speaks to your ideal audience. And having this in your ad copy now is more important than ever. You need to know your avatar, you need to know who you're talking to, and your messaging needs to be really spot on and clear. You know, when you're writing your ad copy, just think about how would I actually say this to someone and imagine that you are telling someone, okay, what your offer is all about and use those words. So if you'd like to know anything more about Facebook ads and, um, you know, getting them to work for you, especially now in this iOS 14, or if you want to know more about the client attraction code, let's connect. You can come and find me over on Facebook. If you just put in Jodie Melwood, you will certainly find me on Facebook. And then if you want to know more about this invisible funnel and how to exactly build it out, what metrics to look at, etc., you can get that with the client attraction code over at jodiemillwood.com forward slash CAC. So that's it for me. I wish you all the best with your Facebook ads. Make sure you look at the data. And one of the first things I always tell people to do before you even launch an ad is to go over and face, check out the Facebook policies regarding ads, okay? Just Google Facebook ad policies and make sure when you're creating your ads that they are compliant. I'd hate to see you get your ad account shut down just because you didn't check that and um, you just said a couple of words that Facebook didn't like. But Facebook ads are amazing. All businesses can apply this client attraction code to their business. And if you're an ad manager, you, this is something that you can build out for clients as well. So that's it for me today. I hope you're inspired to get some Facebook ads running. And if you haven't even run an ad using a selfie, I encourage you to do so. Um, post it, see how it performs, and you might be very pleasantly surprised.